Echinoderma cutisei is a saprobic polypore that can be found growing in North America east of the Rocky Mountains. It is primarily distributed in the southern eastern states. It grows between spring and fall. However, here in Florida, it's warm enough to where I find it growing all 12 months of the year. Ganoderma cutisei grows on decaying hardwoods. It can be found alone or in groups. Occasionally, they grow from the wounds of injured living trees. I usually find them on fallen branches of dead oak trees. The flesh on the fruiting bodies is hard and they're not very dense. They're really light and airy. When young, the caps are often white and yellow and orange. As they mature, they start to grow darker and they turn to different shades of red and brown. I found these four examples of Ganoderma cutesii just before I started filming this video. There's a lot growing in this area though. Let's take a look around on the ground and see what else that we can find. Historically, the common name Barishi has been applied to several different species of Ganoderma, including Ganoderma lingzi, Ganoderma lucidum, and Ganoderma cutesi. For many years, these mushrooms were all classified as Ganoderma lucidum. However, in modern times, DNA research has discovered that these fungi are different species. The scientific name Ganoderma lucidum now applies to the species that are found in Europe, the name Ganoderma lingzi applies to the species that are found in Asia, and then there's several different species of Ganoderma that are found here in North America. One challenge that is caused by the disagreements and the disambiguation of the species of Ganoderma is that it becomes difficult to determine which species were used in studies conducted on the potential benefits of reishi mushrooms. There have been studies conducted using specifically Ganoderma cutesi that demonstrated that it does contain the components found in Ganoderma lingzi that are often associated with the claimed benefits of reishi mushrooms, such as beta-glucans, manogalactoglucans, ganodurins, ganoduric and ganoduranic acid, triterpenes, sterols, and fungal immunomodulatory proteins. Here in the United States, reishi mushroom supplements are typically marketed using Deshea Act friendly claims based around heart health and immune health functions. Like all mushrooms, Ganoderma are surrounded by a layer of chitin. This chitin is why it's a good idea to cook your mushrooms if you're going to be eating them regardless of the species, as the human body doesn't produce enough chitinase, the enzyme used to break down chitin, to break down the layer of chitin we would find on mushrooms like Ganoderma. Structurally, this chitin isn't that different than the chitin surrounding crustaceans like lobster. Since the mushrooms cannot be properly digested when eaten, a variety of alternative methods are sought out in order to consume the medicinal benefits from Ganoderma mushrooms. There are two traditional methods of extracting these components. Teas and tinctures. Water extraction is effective for extracting the water-soluble polysaccharides such as the beta-glucans, which are prized for their potential benefits to cellular health as well as immunity health. However, water extraction will not be effective at extracting the alcohol-soluble terpenes. Reishi can also be tinctured in alcohol for 30 days in order to extract the alcohol-soluble terpenes that are prized for their potential benefits to cardiovascular health. However, alcohol extracts will not be as effective at extracting the water-soluble polysaccharides. Most Reishi mushroom supplements are manufactured using modern extraction techniques using either butane or hexane. These extraction techniques are often criticized for leaving behind byproducts. CO2 supercritical extracts are effective at extracting all of the different components, both alcohol soluble and water soluble, and do not leave behind the byproducts associated with butane and hexane extraction. However, the machinery involved in CO2 supercritical extracts are very expensive, and so this technique is typically only used by expensive premium brands. A method of extraction that has become popular these days is making reishi wine, which in addition to having all of the benefits you would find in an alcohol extract, is also a delightful beverage to consume. Another species of Ganoderma mushroom that I commonly find here in Florida is Ganoderma zanatum, which is sometimes referred to by the common term bracket fungus, although that's a generic name that's applied to a wide variety of unrelated species of fungi. I Typically, we'll find Ganoderma zanatum uh, growing off of palm trees like the ones you can see in my pictures here. Uh, the condition of a tree being infected by Ganoderma zanatum is normally referred to by the common term butt rot. 
Ganoderma butt rot is a lethal and incurable disease which affects mature palms and death of the tree usually occurs sometime between 6 to 12 months after the first symptoms develop. Although there have been some documented examples of trees surviving for several years after the first signs of infection. This species was properly identified fairly recently in 1994 by University of Florida researchers at the Fort Lauderdale Research and Education Center. Although research is still at its initial stages, there has been a promising study that demonstrated that Ganoderma's anatom does possess many of the same beneficial secondary metabolites as other species of Ganoderma that are classified as Rishi mushrooms. Rishi mushrooms have been used in traditional Chinese medicine for over 2,000 years. The Chinese term Lingzi was first recorded in the Eastern Han Dynasty, sometimes between the year 25 and 220. Rishi is listed under the name Lingzi in the American Herbal Pharmacopoeia and Therapeutic Compendium. To which species of Ganoderma the term Rishi applies to remains a subject of debate. According to mycologist Paul Stamens, Ganoderma species such as Ganoderma lecidum as well as Ganoderma curtisii are members of a tight-knit species complex, and the term Rishi can be properly applied to all of them. The opposing perspective is that the term Rishi should only be applied to Ganoderma glingzi that is found growing in the wild in Asia. For more information regarding the identification and classification of Ganoderma mushrooms, please see below. I would be interested in hearing your perspective regarding which species of Ganoderma mushroom the term Rishi should apply to. So if you have an opinion on the topic, please leave it in the comments. I hope you've enjoyed this video. If you did, please give it a like and consider subscribing to the Primal Lore channel to see future videos.